Good morning and welcome back to the channel. I am here with my 2011 Mercedes ML300 and today we are going to be replacing the front right air spring which as you can see is completely collapsed here. We are going to be replacing this air spring with a max speeding rod replacement unit. Now the first thing we're going to do is remove the 40 amp fuse to disable the airmatic suspension system. That, here's the fuse box at the front right of the engine bay. We just open that up. And this here is the fuse which we're going to remove. So as you can see, I've got that fuse out. Now if you have trouble getting that out, you can pull this relay out there, which gives you a little bit extra access. As you can see, today we're using the hoist just to make this job a little bit easier. So just lifting the car off the ground right now. All right, now we'll get the uh, wheel off the vehicle. So the next thing to do is to remove the three nuts on top of the strut under the bonnet using a 13 millimeter socket and the bracket with the wire on it. At this point, we just leave one nut loosely fitted to the top of the strut. Now we're gonna undo the airline with a 10 mil spanner. We've just cracked that and you can see it's just releasing the air pressure out of the air suspension. All right, so as you can see, we've got that airline disconnected. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to actually remove the electrical connection to the strut. And that is something that's slightly different from the front right to the front left. For the front left, you actually have to remove the whole inner skin. But for the front right, we should be able to get to the connection down here, unclip that, and just feed that through without having to remove the inner skin from the inside of the mud guard. So if you're doing the front left, you're gonna to have to remove this whole skin, unfortunately. But for the front right, we don't need to do that. You can see, I've just removed this connector there um, and I've a little bit of a twist and then this cable will come off. Now we'll just loosen, we'll probably take one uh, of the bolts out on the inner skin and then we'll just feed this connection through to the air strut. So it's this one here, we'll just undo this one, just the one on the front right, just to get, allow access to pull that cable through. And as you can see, we've been able to pull that electrical cable through without removing this inner skin. So it saves a little bit of time. What we're gonna be doing next is unclipping all of the electrical connections that come down onto the air strut. And what I recommend you do is to stop right now and take a couple of photographs so you know how to get this all back together at the end. These are the photographs which I took, which really did come in handy when putting these wires back together in the end. So as you can see, we've got all of the electrical connections unclipped, free of the strut. We've also unclipped the uh, brake line so that we're going to be able to get this strut out now free of all of those electrical connections. To make life easier in undoing the nuts, we just now sprayed some RP7 on the upper ball joint nut, the sway bar nut, and the lower strut nuts. The next thing to do is to undo the nut on the sway bar using a 21mm socket. Use a jack with a block of wood to lift the sway bar so that the linkage slides out easily. Next, remove the strut nut and bolt using a 24mm socket and a 15 16 socket or spanner. At this point, support the strut with the block of wood and your jack, and then remove the upper ball joint nut with a 21mm socket. You will probably then need to use a ball joint separator to crack the ball joint open. Having removed all the wires and nuts and bolts securing the strut, the next step is to remove the strut from the car completely. Don't forget to remove that 13mm nut we left loose on top of the strut at the beginning. In order to remove the strut, 
you will need to compress the strut. And what I've found works well is using an inch diameter pipe through the bottom of the strut onto the subframe to do this compression. With the strut compressed, you can then maneuver it over the top of the front axle and then remove it completely from the car. Now that we have the strut out of the car, the next thing to do is to remove the failed air spring from the strut. Use a spark plug socket to tap down the top cap and then use screwdrivers to remove the retaining clip. Got it. The top cap can then be removed using a pair of vice grips. The next step is to remove the nut holding the air spring to the strut. It was certainly worthwhile trying to use the impact on the nut. However, as is often the case, it just spun. Therefore, to get the nut off, you firmly hold the nut with a screwdriver and use a T30 socket on the inside stud, remembering to turn it clockwise. With the securing nut removed, turn the strut over and hit the air spring with a hammer. With the air spring loose, tip the strut back over before you actually remove the air spring or rotate it and take a good look at the orientation of the air spring upper strut bolts to the actual strut itself. This will help you later in the reassembly process. The new Max Peating Rod air spring kit contains all new plastic and rubber o-rings. So remove all of the plastic and rubber o-rings and give the strut a thorough clean. So in the new kit from Max Beating Rods, you receive a new air spring itself, a new top cap, two new rubber O-rings, one plastic O-ring, a new retaining clip for the top cap, and a new air fitting for the airline. So after you have cleaned the strut, it's time to install the new air spring kit. Start by installing the plastic O-ring, then the rubber O-ring. Next, I suggest applying some lubricant to the new O-rings before installing the new air spring. Here, I am using some silicon spray. Now you can slide the new air spring onto the strut. If you do remember the orientation of the three top bolts, get that correct now as it will save you time later. The next thing to do is to install the top nut. And we're going to do this the same way that we took it off. That is using a screwdriver to actually hold the nut and a T30 socket on the inner stud to actually tighten that top nut. Remembering that we need to turn that T30 socket anti-clockwise. With the top nut securely fastened, it's now time to install the new top cap. First of all, you will need to install the new O-ring on the new top cap. And I just used a little bit of silicon spray here just to lubricate it. The top cap then needs to be pressed in to allow room for the retaining clip. Initially we tried the same method that we removed it, that is using a spark plug socket and a hammer to tap it in. However that didn't work. So to press in the top cap we ended up using a couple of temporary spanners and a couple of sockets between the spanners and the top cap just to lower that top cap into position. With the top cap lowered, it's just a matter of using a screwdriver or two to push the retaining clip then into position. Got it. Perfect. It's then just a matter of removing those temporary spanners and the extra couple of sockets that we use to lower the top cap. With the new air spring installed on the strut, it's now time to install this strut back into the car, which really is just the reverse procedure that we went through to remove the strut from the car in the beginning. So to start the installation of the strut, you reposition the top bolt of the strut into the top of the wheel well and loosely fit a couple of nuts. Now, if you didn't pay attention to the orientation of the air spring when you disassembled and reassembled the air spring on the strut, you'll have to now spin the air spring relative to the strut to get the correct orientation of the studs. I don't need to do this as I paid attention when I disassembled and reassembled the strut. The trick is now to compress that strut and get it up over that front drive shaft. As you can see, using that long inch pipe really does help here. Got it. 
much easier. Next, use the jack and the block of wood to lift the wishbone into position to allow the lower strut bolt to easily be reinserted. Then the nut can be tightened onto the strut bolt using a 24mm socket and 15 16 spanner. Next, you need to tighten the nut onto the upper ball joint. If you use a socket like this, you will find that the entire ball joint just spins and the nut doesn't actually tighten. So to tighten the nut on the upper ball joint, what you need to do is use a 21mm spanner on the nut and a T30 socket bit on the ball joint stud. Remember, you will need to ratchet the T30 socket anti-clockwise to tighten the nut onto the ball joint. Next, it's time to reinstall the sway bar and once again we use the block of wood and jack to lift the sway bar into position. And then it's a matter of tightening the nut onto the sway bar linkage. Once again, you will probably find that you need to use a 21mm spanner on the nut and a T30 socket bit on the start of the sway bar linkage, similar to the ball joint. So once we've got the lower suspension bolt fully tightened, the ball joint fully tightened, and the uh, sway bar fully tightened, we then have to connect all of the electrical wires and the brake line back into their original spots. And remember to use that photograph which you took earlier to guide you as to how these go back. All right, so as you can see, I've just clicked all those wires back. I'll just pan around with the camera so you can see how I've got them just in case you guys didn't take a photograph before. You can see the main air suspension power lead, which we haven't pushed through yet. Comes down the middle, threads on there, and then comes through the middle and loops her back around to the active dampening system. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna push this lead through behind the panel here, and we'll reconnect that on the inside. We're gonna reconnect it to the bracket. Remember that just needed a slight twist, and that clicks back into place like that. And then the connector just slides on. Being reconnected that active damping system electrical cable, we just put that one 10 mil Fasten them back on, and we're done on the inside. Now it's a matter of putting the bracket back in position and tightening the nuts on top of the strut. So now that we've tightened all of the nuts on top of the strut, it's time to fit the new fitting, which is supplied in the kit, to the uh, airline. Uh, the secret here is we just take out that little collet and then slide that fitting off. So with the new air fitting on, we then screw it in to the fitting at the top of the air spring. Use a 10 millimeter spanner to finish tightening this fitting and be careful not to over tighten this. Finally, the 40 amp airmatic suspension fuse then needs to be put back. Before starting the car, you then need to lower the car to the approximate normal ride height. So after you've put the 40 amp fuse back in the fuse box and lowered the car, you start the car and the uh, compressor should kick in. Now I'll be honest, for the first time ever on this vehicle, the compressor didn't kick in. So what I had to do, I had to get into the car and I had to actually press the button to cycle the suspension settings from sport to comfort and then the compressor kicked in. So now that the suspension has pumped up, you're just going to hit the raising button. Rising button there. You can hear the compressor's kicked in. And the car's lifting itself up into the four wheel drive position. So that's it, folks. That's how to replace a faulty air spring on a W164 Mercedes ML class vehicle with an aftermarket unit. If you've liked this video, do feel free to like, share and subscribe.